Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how you can make a home photography studio with just what you've got in the house in about five minutes. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now this week, we're gonna be talking about home photography studios. Now it sounds like a big deal, sounds like you're gonna need a lot of things to set it up, but actually, we're gonna go through a way you can set it up in about five minutes with just the things that you've got in your house. And it's a great way of taking photos of things, you know, whether that be like a, a nice vase, or maybe a, a plushie, or maybe a weird statue of a chimpanzee or a monkey or whatever. You can take photos of whatever you want, but this is a super easy way to actually set that up. Now there's two things we need to talk about, maybe three, but let's start off with the two. The first one is lighting. This is gonna essentially decide where you set up your shoot. The second one, is your backdrop. What kind of backdrop are you gonna use? What kind of feel do you wanna go for the photo? Now let's talk about lighting. Now you might be tempted to think you might need a whole setup where I've got a light here, I've then got a less powerful light over there, kind of just filling in a bit of the shadow, and then I've got all these lights behind me to create this kind of set, but you don't need any of that. You can, of course, use continuous lights or flashes or anything like that that you might have, but let's go on the assumption that you don't have any of that and you wanna set something up very quickly and very easily. Well, essentially, we're gonna be using a window to create our light. Now, a window is gonna give you a lot of light, a bit like the one behind me right now. I've actually set my stuff up just over there. It's gonna give you a lot of soft, diffused light. As long as you don't have harsh directional sunlight coming straight through the window, you're gonna get really nice soft daylight just falling onto your subject. And there's a couple of different ways that you can set up your shoot using the window as your light. I've set my stuff up, as you can see behind me, with the window just to the side, so that I'm getting side lighting. That gives me a slightly more dramatic lighting. So I get light on one side and then kind of darkness on the other side. Of course, you could always do a different type of lighting where you would have essentially the stuff set up opposite the window, so that essentially the light from the window is just falling completely onto your subject. So for example, where I am now could be where my subject is with the backdrop just here, and the light would fall onto me completely. Now that's gonna give you a slightly, slightly more flat image. The lighting's not gonna be as interesting maybe as having it to the side, because the side is gonna create a little bit more contrast, a little bit more drama in the photo, but it depends what kind of image you want to go for. Now, once you've chosen your position to set up based on the window and based on the light, we're gonna to need to think about backdrops. Now, there's lots of different ways you can create a nice backdrop without spending any money and without actually having to do much at all. When you think of a studio photo, you might think of a nice black backdrop or a white backdrop, but we can use all kinds of things. We can certainly go black and white, but we can go gray, we can go red. It all depends on what you have to hand. So what makes for a good backdrop? Well, there's loads of stuff that you can use that's just in your house already. And there's two main things that I've been using. The first thing that I use was a piece of card. Now I bought this for about a pound. I've got loads of different colors in like an arts and craft shop ages ago for a totally different reason. But actually they work really well as a backdrop. You can actually see one right now, just over in the corner there, black piece of card, which just works like a perfect backdrop for this vase that I've got set up. But I've got black, I've got white, I've got blue. Now obviously they aren't as easy to get hold of now because all the shops are shut as they were a few months ago when I actually bought them. But there's something else which is super handy for a backdrop that most of us have just lying around in our house. And that's a blanket. Now I've been using loads of different blankets for ages for different backdrop shoots. For example, here today, I've been using a gray blanket that I just have lying around on my sofa. I've got a red blanket that I've just been lying around on my sofa. I've actually got a very, very dark gray blanket that I've used in the past to get portrait shots like this with just using that for the backdrop. And of course, if you're shooting by yourself, it can be a little bit tricky to actually hang those in the background. Obviously, if you have someone else with you, they can just hold it there. It only takes a second, it's not a massive favor. But if you're by yourself, one of the easiest ways to do it is just to use something like light stands and just use pegs to actually attach the blanket to two light stands so that it stays up. If you don't have light stands, just find something in your house that either stands up, like even like a lamp, like a floor lamp would be perfect for this kind of thing, and just stand them either side so you can actually peg the blankets onto them and just have that hanging behind your subject. Okay, so I said there were two things, maybe three. Now we've covered the two. Let's talk about that maybe third one. And this is ultimately about controlling the light. 
So we talked earlier about using the window for your nice diffuse lighting, for your nice soft lighting coming through and falling onto your subject really nicely. But sometimes it's either too much or it's not enough. And sometimes it's just not falling in the way that you want it to fall. So for example, I'm using a really big window that's giving me a lot of light, which is great in some ways, but it also means I have a lot less control over the, the look of the image based on the lighting. So the third thing we're just gonna talk about here is just controlling that light and how you can actually shape it based on the window. So there's two main ways that we can control the light and actually shape it so that it falls exactly as we want. Obviously this window is pretty massive, so I'm getting a lot of light onto my subject. And maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want the light to come from up above, a little bit like my light on me right now is shooting down onto me instead of just straight from the side. Maybe we want to actually have a darker kind of side away from the window so we have even more contrast. Well, there's two things that we can do to achieve this. The first one, if we want to have the light higher or we just want to have less of it, is essentially we just need to block that light. We just need to find a way to block the light. Now, curtains work obviously really well. As you can see, I've got curtains behind me. I can just pull those a little bit to actually reduce the amount of light coming in. But that doesn't help us with keeping the light higher up and coming down rather than straight side on. So the easiest way here, exactly like we've been doing with the backdrops, is just to use blankets. Now, if you've got someone with you, you can just get them to stand and hold the blankets so that it covers about half the window so that you're getting light from the top of the window rather than from the whole window. But you can also just peg them onto something as well just to keep them in place while you take your photo. And this is a great, great way to shape that light and just have, have less of it and have it more directional so you are in control of that light. Now, if you wanna have less light on the other side, so you've got the directional light coming in, but you wanna have it darker on the other side, there's a really easy way to actually achieve this. It's essentially to set up something which is not going to reflect any light back onto your subject. Again, we could use a piece of card, a black piece of card, or just a dark blanket is going to stop that light reflecting back onto your subject. You just set it up on the other side of your subject to the window, so that essentially there's no light reflecting or bouncing back. It's basically the opposite of a reflector. It's gonna do the absolute opposite job and it's gonna allow you to create a slightly darker side and a lighter side. Now all of this takes about five minutes to set up and once you're done, you can take a photo of pretty much anything. You can take a nice portrait of your pet, a person, any object that you might wanna take a photo of, food. It works for pretty much anything at all, as long as you can fit that backdrop behind it. I'd love to see some of your photos, so make sure that if you do try out this technique, tag us in Instagram, at Park Cameras, or use the hashtag, hashtag Park Cameras. I'll check it out and I'll feature some of my favorites in a future video so I can plug your Instagram as well. Make sure to do all the cool stuff that all us YouTubers tell you to do, like like the video, subscribe, ring the bell if you want to. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.